When the 2022 Sentinel was announced, I knew I needed to update my Sentinel magnetization guide, the very first video I ever made for this channel. So naturally, I picked up the Cadia Stands Army set. But as I studied the assembly instructions and experimented with magnetizing this kit, I came to an unexpected conclusion. Games Workshop has made magnetization of this kit almost completely unnecessary. And that's left me in a weird place. Let's talk about that, as well as some other thoughts I have about the new Sentinel. So why do I say magnetization is almost unnecessary? Well, essentially every functional option for this kit, that is to say anything called out in the codex, has been designed in such a way that they can be friction fitted onto the model. That's right, the grip is strong enough that so long as you apply a little force, whatever weapon you attach to the Sentinel will hold, even after some mild jostling. This includes the Hunter Killer missile and the chainsaw, which on the previous kit required either glue or magnetization. The instructions still indicate that you should glue your chosen options on, but there's really no need to at this point, with a few minor caveats that I'll go into later. The canopy has also been significantly redesigned. In the previous kit, the pilot's head was too tall and would prevent assembly of the armored canopy, thus requiring some work if you wanted to have the option of switching between scout and armored variants. Now with the increased scale, there's plenty of room. The armored canopy even has grooves that slot onto the scout canopy cage, allowing you to gravity fit it into place. So that's it, no need to magnetize. End of video. If you found it helpful, think about leaving a like. Mmm, now hold on a minute. I spent a lot of time magnetizing this kit, and I think there are still some advantages to magnetizing, at least part of it. If you follow along, I'll show you everything I did, as well as discuss some of the reasons that I still recommend specific options. But before jumping in, let me give you a few more general reasons for magnetizing. First, plastic can wear down, so the friction fits may become weak over time, resulting in frustrating instances of spontaneous disassembly. There's also the potential of scuffing your fancy paint job after repeatedly using force to fit the pieces into place, though that can largely be mitigated by applying a varnish over your paint when you're done. Friction fitted pieces may also just come loose through the course of a game, eventually falling off. A magnetized joint is self-correcting to a point, so the chances of knocking a component off are reduced. Magnetization also opens additional possibilities for storing your pieces. Imagine adhering a magnetic strip to any surface and lining all your weapons up in a row, much like those fancy knife racks. On top of all of this, I have specific reasons for specific options, but like I said, we'll cover those as they come up. One last thing before we hop in. I do want to stress that this video might be considered more of an exploration than a guide. I'll be showing my methods as well as my mistakes, as I feel those are just as valuable in helping you learn how to magnetize your model. There will be times where what I show on screen isn't the most optimal thing to do, but I will recommend better alternatives, as well as call out steps that I absolutely do not recommend. Hopefully all of this will save some of the more self-driven of you from falling into the same traps I did. All right, we have a lot to cover and I'm already over 600 words in, so let's get magnetizing. We'll start by collecting the materials and tools we'll need. Naturally, you'll need a sentinel to assemble, plastic cutters, a hobby knife, and plastic glue. You know, nothing unexpected here. Additionally, we'll be needing two millimeter by one millimeter magnets, three millimeter by one millimeter magnets, five millimeter by one millimeter magnets, eight millimeter by 1.5 millimeter magnets, super glue, I typically will use CA glue, metal files, plastic tweezers, some wax paper, a hobby drill, including two millimeter and three millimeter bits, a hobby saw, and some sort of filling material. Today, I'll be using green stuff. Now, if you're confident in your ability to keep magnet polarities consistent, skip to the next chapter. For everyone else, Here's a tip. Align all the magnets on your model so that the chosen pole is consistently pointing up and away from the model's base, what I will refer to as the outward face for the rest of this video. It's opposite being called the inward face. Doesn't matter which pole you choose, north or south, if you even know which is which, as long as you're consistent. This will help prevent painful to correct mistakes later on. Consistency is a powerful tool. To make checking polarity easy, you can use a magnetized rod like this one. Take some masking tape and mark it with arrows, and then wrap that masking tape around the rod so that the arrow points in the chosen direction. 
Now, before each joint is magnetized, you'll be able to check your magnets against the rod. To make installing the magnets even easier, keep wax paper on hand and place a small piece between the rod or additional magnets and the magnet to be glued into place. This will help you slide the rod away from the magnet after setting the magnet into place. Though, depending on the joint, it might not always be possible to do this. I'll have more tips as we go, but I think it's finally time to open the instructions. Immediately, we see that the legs are no longer poseable by default. No, flipping which foot is forward doesn't count. To make them poseable, you just need to snip off these bits. Go ahead, I won't tell. But it will make assembling the legs a little bit more fiddly. Figure out what you want to do and get the three segments of each leg assembled. The instructions don't list the armor plates as optional, but Games Workshop did release this promotional image which shows the Scout variant without them. If you're confused as to what you should do, let me clear it up for you. Nobody worth playing with will care whether your Sentinel has these panels or not, regardless of what variant you're running. If it has the correct canopy, you're good, and I won't hear otherwise. But if you're like me and you want an appropriate amount of paneling for the variant you're running, and you don't mind wasting a little time magnetizing things that don't have any business being magnetized, remember, that's why we're here. And you have some green stuff, I know that's a lot of ands, or similar gap filling material available. Don't skip the next step. Don't do it. We're gonna, we're gonna do this. You and I, we have this. I believe in you. First, the shin panel. Use something sharp like your hobby knife or a pin to create a tiny guide hole that we're going to use to guide our drill bit. We're gonna put this guide hole in this little rectangular nub. Then, using a two millimeter bit in your hobby drill, drill a hole at least one millimeter deep. Be gentle here, the bit might drift as it extends beyond the sides of the nub. Repeat this on the panel, centering the hole in the slot, and drill through the panel completely. Don't worry about this hole for now, we're gonna address it later. Take two of your two millimeter magnets and double check your polarity with that nifty rod we made earlier. Apply a small amount of CA glue on the edges of the outward facing magnet and slot it into the hole in the panel, doing your best to keep the magnet flush with the inner face. Give it a couple of minutes to dry, then set the inward facing magnet into the rectangular nub, this time placing a drop of glue at the center of the magnet's inward face. You'll have a small cavity on the outward face of the panel, but again, we'll address it later. For the thigh panel, we'll need to get clever with alignment of the magnet holes. What I found works best is to hold the panel in position and drill straight through both simultaneously. With the whole drill, we can slot our magnets into place in the same way we did with the shin panel. Now you need to make a call on the knee plates. In order to magnetize this, we will have to ruin the teeth of the joint's gears. Fixing this up again will require some sculpting with green stuff, which is a lot of work for not a lot of return. So of course, I'm gonna do it, but I won't judge you if you don't. At least not a whole lot. Maybe a little judging. There are five slots, so the logical spot to drill is in the center of the third slot. Drill so that the hole is a millimeter deeper than the recess. When slotting your magnet in, make it flush with that recess, not the teeth. Unlike the other plates, we have a convenient nub to drill in the center of on the plate itself. Glue the magnet into place and enjoy the useless ability to swap the knees with one another. Now, I don't recommend you complete assembly of the legs just yet, as it will make the next step more difficult. The least obvious joint on this model to magnetize is the one I think deserves it the most. By magnetizing the torso to the pelvis, we gain two advantages. Storage and transportation becomes easier, and big tumbles are less likely to cause serious harm to the model. You theoretically could just let gravity hold the torso into place thanks to the nature of the new ball and socket joint, but that's asking for trouble when you go to move your sentinel in the game, and negates the latter advantage. To magnetize this, we need to take the pelvic piece and cut off a significant portion of the ball. I used my hobby knife to make a small cut that I then used to guide my hobby saw using a small, narrow blade. I don't have a good tool to measure here, so I'm just eyeballing it, looking to cut off just enough that the two magnets, eight millimeters by the way, will fit into the socket. I do a quick dry fit to test that the eight millimeter magnets fit, and if there's not enough room, I just cut off a little more. Tedious perhaps, but easy enough. Now, I initially used two five millimeters here, which I'm showing you now, because that's what worked with the old kit. But with the heavier torso and the introduction of a tilt to the ball and socket joint, 
I found these were no longer strong enough. I pried them off and then switched to the larger 8mm magnets I mentioned earlier. Now, unfortunately, two 8mm magnets, due to their thicker size, weren't going to fit nicely into the area that I had opened up. So in order to make this work, I had to get creative. I busted out a real drill, you know, one of those big handheld power drills, which I absolutely do not recommend. And I drilled using the closest bit I had to an 8mm, but I didn't drill all the way through. I did most of the cleaning up with other tools in order to get the hole into a nice circle. You have to be very gentle with a drill like this because it will absolutely destroy your model. The 8mm magnets now fit, and I was able to put the magnets into place. It was well worth the extra effort though, as these magnets are much stronger, and we still have enough of the ball to align the torso to the pelvis. If you held off assembly on the legs like I recommended earlier, you can go ahead and do so. Let's talk about the pilot next. I made the mistake of thinking the pilot wouldn't fit inside the Sentinel with the armored canopy in use, because that's how it was in the previous Sentinel. Well, because of the larger size of the Sentinel, this is no longer the case. Just pick the head you want, glue everything into place. But if you want the ability to do some fun things like swap out the head or even the entire torso of the body, of the pilot, of the dude, or even the torso to represent changes in regiment, here's what to do. For the torso, drill two millimeter hole at the deepest part of the neck socket. Then on the head, drill another two millimeter hole right at the back of the neck's nub. Make sure your pilot hole's extra deep here to ensure the drill bites properly, and be very gentle as you press in as the drill will want to drift. You may even need to apply some counter force towards the front of the head as you drill. Glue your magnets into place, outward into the head, and enjoy being able to change your pilot's identity at a moment's notice. To go a step further, we can magnetize the torso. Switch to a 3mm bit. Now drill a hole in the center of the flat attachment point at the pilot's pelvis, and another at the center of the bottom of the torso torso. Then, glue 3mm magnets into place, outward face into the torso. Something I didn't consider during my experimentations, but would be simple enough, is to magnetize the arms so that they can work for whatever torso you choose to use. But I'll leave that as an exercise for the viewer. As I've alluded to already, the previous kit required the canopies to be magnetized if you wanted to swap between scout and armored variants. So naturally I jumped straight in, mimicking the process I used in my previous guide and coming up with what I thought were clever solutions to changes made in the new kit. Only to get to the end and realize it was all a huge waste of time. Don't do any of that. You see this thing on screen? Don't do it. It's not worth it. For those of you who may have skipped the beginning of the video, the reason here is that the armored canopy now has these grooves that allow it to slot into place on top of the scout canopy. At this point, all you have to do is assemble everything like normal and just not glue the armored canopy into place. Let gravity do the work. Swapping between armored and scout variants could not be easier, apart from just playing with cool people who are fine with you running your favorite aesthetic as either. Are you a cool person? I don't know why I winked, that was horrible. Moral of the story, thoroughly read the instructions before starting, just like they tried to teach you in school. I explained earlier why you don't have to magnetize the weapons on the Sentinel, but if you're like me and you want to do it anyways, here's how. First, cut off 2mm from this tapered joint on the torso. Glue a 3mm magnet onto the spot you just cut off, as well as another inside the socket of each weapon, making sure to check your polarity, outward face, into the weapon. That's it. Seriously. No cutting of protruding details on the weapon like in the previous kit, though I probably could have gone away without that anyways. No complicated multi-joint assemblies. And no drilling. The new weapons are seriously well designed. Just repeat this for all of the weapons that you care about, which should be all of them because they're all awesome, aren't they? Changing up our weapons because we're cool. The accessories, should you care to magnetize them, are almost as easy as the weapons. Cut off those rods, place 3mm magnets where the rods used to be, and glue another 3mm magnet into the socket. These accessories are a little trickier, but it's easy enough to fix them. It just calls for us to finally break out our green stuff, or whatever gap filling stuff you have. Cut away a small amount of the yellow and blue material and mix it together until you get a consistent green color. You really don't need much. Somehow, no matter how little I think I take, it always ends up being way too much. If it starts to stick to your fingers, just cover them in a little bit of water and carry on. This applies to any tools you may choose to use as well. 
Now we'll just fill the hollow portions of our pieces with green stuff and push the magnets into place. Since we already have the green stuff prepared, let's go back to those armor panels and get those little gaps filled up. Just take a small blob of the green stuff and press it into place. We'll let that set for 24 hours, then carefully cut away the excess, filing the remaining down to get a nice smooth finish. And you're done, except for the hunter killer missile. This is where I have a couple of issues with the new kit. My first issue is with the Codex. While the Hunter Killer Missile is listed in the War Gear options, its characteristics are not. Now relegated to the Weapon Profile list near the back of the book. This makes for some awkward page turning. Sure, as the game becomes more digital, this becomes less of an issue, but the Warhammer app is still paywalled, and honestly, I'm just not a big fan of Battlescribe's user interface. As such, I don't think little issues like this can be categorized as non-issues just yet. Second, and this is probably the one change from the previous kit that I actively dislike, the missile and its mount are now a single piece. I'm sorry, but I like to be able to remove the missile after firing while still having the rail in place. You know, I, how else am I going to show that the Sentinel was packing heat? Where is the consideration for my immersion? If it doesn't bother you, you can just treat it like any of the other accessories, simply snipping off the tip of the rod and attaching a 3mm magnet in its place. But for those of you like me who find this change unacceptable, here's what you can do. Using your hobby knife, gently cut away from the plastic holding the missile to the mount making multiple passes. Don't try to get it all at once or you risk warping the piece, or worse, slipping and giving yourself a nice little gash. Just keep repeating this, taking a little plastic off each time until the two are separated. Once the missile's separated, we'll drill two, two millimeter holes into the rail, then drill matching holes on the missile. I recommend measuring these holes as it's gonna help you be consistent between kits. Glue our 2mm magnets into place, and we're done. Now we can remove the Hunter Killer missile after it's been used in game, while retaining that mount to show that, why yes, my Sentinel was packing heat. It probably missed. I think in the dozens of times I've used a Hunter Killer missile, I've hit maybe twice. I'm gonna keep taking it though, and it's cool. I, I play by cool. That's everything. Every single agonizing, unnecessary step. How committed are you? Let me know down in the comments. Please, please. I need to know I'm not the only one willing to go to such stupid lengths. But whether you magnetized almost nothing or just about everything, be ready to do it 14 more times. All kidding aside, if you found this video at all helpful or entertaining, think about giving this video a like. I'd like to make more magnetization guides, perhaps even for kits that actually need it, so let me know what kits you'd like to see magnetized as well. If you want to thank me for the content I've already produced, consider heading over to buymeacoffee.com slash tabletopackley and sending a tip. And if you want eyes on everything I do, you can follow me on Instagram at Tabletop Ackley, where I try to post work in progress images and things that just don't make it into the videos. That's it for today. I'm Tabletop Ackley. Thanks for hanging out with me today.